In section 1.3, we're going to talk about rates of change and graph behavior. So um, one thing we're going to talk about is where a function is increasing and decreasing. So a function is increasing on the interval from A to B if the function value increases as the inputs increase which the way that is actually going to look is the function is going to have a positive slope there. All right. And then a function is decreasing on an interval from A to B if the function value decreases as the input inputs increase. So as your x's get larger, the y's are going to be getting smaller, which means there's going to be a negative slope. All right. And then um, we're also going to talk about local maximum values or relative maximum and minimum values. And so a local rel or relative maximum occurs when a function changes from increasing to decreasing. All right, and if you think about the way that's going to look, so a function will be increasing, so have a positive slope, and then all of a sudden starts decreasing. So at that point where it changes, it creates a relative maximum. All right, and then a local or relative minimum occurs when a function changes from decreasing to increasing. Right. And if you think about what that's going to look like, we're going to be decreasing our negative slope and then changes over to positive slope, which creates a relative minimum or local minimum at that point where it changes. Right. And these local maxima, local minima, they're also called local extrema or relative extrema. All right, and then the other thing we're going to talk about today is the average rate of change. An average rate of change is just another way of talking about the slope. And so the average rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. So that triangle is delta, and it means change. Um, and so you guys may remember from Algebra 1 a formula for slope, where you would subtract the y's in the numerator and subtract the x's in the denominator. Right. And then a way, a more, I guess, sophisticated way that you write that um, is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And sometimes you might be asked to interpret the slope. And if you're asked to interpret the slope, this is you just kind of fill in the blanks. So on average, the whatever the Y stands for increases or decreases by whatever that you get for that average rate of change um, per unit of whatever the X stands for. All right, so let's start off talking about increasing and decreasing. So we have this graph, um, and we're going to give the intervals on which the graph is increasing, decreasing, and constant. So let's just start with increasing. So I'm looking for where the graph would have a positive slope, or as you're reading it from left to right, you're going uphill. And when we give these intervals, these intervals are always x intervals. We're never talking about y intervals when we're doing this. So we're given the x intervals where the graph is increasing. So it's this part of the graph right there. And so those are the x's 
from four to forever to the right and forever to the right is to infinity. Let's talk about where the graph is decreasing. The graph is decreasing where you have a negative slope, or if you're reading it from left to right, you're going downhill. So that's all this part right here. So we're looking at those X's. And so when the graph becomes a graph, which is as far as you can go to the left, negative infinity, the graph is decreasing. And we decrease all the way until we get to where X is zero. Right. And then the very last um, section is where the graph is constant. Right. And my graph is constant right here. So we're looking at the X's right there. And those are the X's between zero and four. Now on these intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant, we don't do brackets because um, the edges is changing over. Um, so we just I'll go ahead and just use parentheses every time. Okay, and then for number two, we have this graph G of X. We're going to estimate the location of any relative minima. So that means um, where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing or where you have like uh, the bottom of a valley. And so I can see there's two places where I have relative minima right here and right here. And so I'm just going to estimate those locations. So um, we're going to go ahead and give our relative minima and relative maxima as ordered pairs. So I'm going to say that first one, the one on the left, is about negative 2.5, negative 35 as an ordered pair. And the other one um, looks like it is exactly the 0.20. Right. B, ask us to find the location of any relative maxima. So the relative maxima is going to be the top of a mountain or where the graph is changing from increasing to decreasing. So there it looks like there's one there, and it looks like it's about at the point 132-ish. All right, and then we're going to give the intervals of increasing and decreasing. And so remember, those intervals are always X's. So when I, I know that um, my intervals of increasing, decreasing change when the function um, has a maximum or minima. So I know I'm going to be using these X values when I'm given my intervals of increasing and decreasing and infinity and negative infinity also. Okay, so let's just start with increasing. So I'm increasing where I have a positive slope. And so remember, we're not using Y's. We're only using X's. So I'm just going to draw an arrow up and an arrow down. And so um, I know I'm increasing from when X is negative 2.5 to where X is 1. And then I start increasing again at the far right of the graph, which is from 2 to infinity. And then there's nowhere on this graph where it looks like it's constant. So everywhere else, we're going to be decreasing. So that's going to be from negative infinity to negative 2.5. And then from, oops, from 1 to 2. Right. And then the second part of this lesson is the average rate of change. And so um, that's what the rest of the examples are about. So number three, we have this function g, and we're going to find the average rate of change in the interval from one to six. And so I'm going to focus on this formula. So I'm going to go ahead, and a is going to be one, and b is going to be six. So let's find f of 6, 
by plugging it in and that's going to give me 14 and then we'll find f of 1 by plugging 1 in and that's going to be 4 All right and then to find the average rate of change is going to be f of 6 minus f of 1 over 6 minus 1. So 14 minus 4 over 5, or 10 over 5, or just regular old 2 is my average rate of change on that interval. Or you could say if we had this graph like that, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but that the slope, I guess we'll say this is where x was 1, and this is where x was 6, the slope of that line would be 2. Okay, and we can also find average rate of change on a table. So this table actually means something. So this function C of T gives the average cost in dollars of a gallon of gasoline T years after 2000. We want to find the average rate of change of the average cost of gas between 2002 and 2006. So there's lots of information on this table, but the only ones we care about are 2002 and 2006. The other stuff we don't need. We don't need it all. all right? So we're basically going to do f of 6, no, not f, sorry, c. c of 6 minus c of 2 over 6 minus 2. All right. So C of 6 is 2.51, C of 2 is 1.47, and then I already know 6 minus 2 is 4. All right, so that gives us 1.04 over 4. And you can just use your little calculator to do that, and that's going to be that decimal. All right, and if we're going to interpret the meaning, we can go back to this little sentence and just fill in what everything stands for for this table. So on average, whatever the y variable is, so the y variable is the average cost of a gallon of gasoline And then since it is a positive um, slope, we're going to say increases. I don't think I need a comma there. At a rate of 0.26 or 26 cents. I'll just say 26 cents. And then um, this is going to be per unit of x. So our x unit is years. So per year between 2002 and 2006. All right. So there I have your assignment and I'm having you change the directions a little bit on the last four to add um, something in that go ahead and estimate the location of any relative extrema while you're doing that.